All right. Fancy seeing you here. I've heard that there are books in these woods. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Let's go find them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think I can hear one. I can hear, can you hear it? I can hear pages fluttering. I was right, it's here. Here it is, let's take it this way, because I'm stuck. The first one, Spin in Silver by Naomi Novik. Let's read the blurb, maybe not all of it. Miriam is the daughter of her village's moneylender but poverty beckons as her father's too kind-hearted to collect his debts. Then Miriam hardens her own heart and takes up his work. Her success creates rumours she can turn silver into gold, which attract the fairy king of winter himself. He sets her an impossible challenge, and if she fails, she dies. Yet if she triumphs, a fate worse than death awaits. I can hear another one somewhere. By this way. Come with me. Look. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Whoa. This one is by Francesca Gibbons. A Clock of Stars. The Shadow Moth. Imogen and Marie follow a silver moth through a door in a tree and find themselves trapped in a magical kingdom where no one behaves as they should. The sisters must move fast to escape the strange monsters that come out after dark. Longing to return home, they find help from a spoiled prince, a dancing beer, a dancing bear, Freudian slip, and even the stars above. I can hear it again. Somewhere, can you hear it? Like pages fluttering. It's coming from this. I can hear it. Eh, it's down here. Whoa. This one is by S.A. Patrick. A Darkness of Dragons. Let's read the blurb for this one. Patch Brightwater is a boy in disgrace. Thrown in jail for playing a forbidden spell, he is no one's idea of a hero. But then he discovers a deadly truth. The evil piper of Hamlin is on the loose. With the help of Wren, a girl cursed to live as a rat, and Bava, a fire-breathing Dracogriff, Patch must stop the Piper, sparking the biggest battle of them all. Again, it's just, I don't know, just look that way, like, can you see all of the butterflies flying around in the sunlight? But it's this way. It's not butterfly wings. Wait here, it's a long way away, I can hit just faintly. I found. I wish it wasn't so far away off the path. This one by Jasper Ford, The Air Affair. There is another 1985 where London's criminal gangs have moved into the lucrative literary market and Thursday next is on the trail of the new crime waves Mr Big. Acheron Hades has been kidnapping characters from works of fiction and holding them to ransom. Jane Eyre is gone, missing. Thursday sets out to find a way into the book to repair the damage. But solving crimes against literature isn't easy when you also have to find time to halt the Crimean War, persuade the man you love to marry you, and figure out who really wrote Shakespeare's plays. Perhaps today just isn't going to be Thursday's day? Join her on a truly breathtaking adventure and find out for yourself. Fiction will never be the same again. Pages rustling. Let's look over this way. I can hear him. Look, it's 
think I've found it is in here. Oh, we know this one. This is by Garth Nix, Drowned Wednesday, part of the Keys to the Kingdom series. So this one, Wednesday has rolled around and Arthur Penhalligan has an invitation to return to the house that he can't refuse. Drowned Wednesday has sent a ship to pick him up from the hospital, even though his hometown is miles from any ocean. From hospital room to the high seas, Arthur finds himself on an adventure that will pit him against pirates, storms, explosions of nothing laced gunpowder, and a vast beast that eats everything it encounters. Through it all, he's drawn deeper into the central mystery of the house. Arthur must find the third part of the will and claim the third key, not just for himself, but for the millions, if not billions, who will suffer if he doesn't. See one, it's just over here. Do you see it? It's on the path. I think it's a wild one. Let's go, come on. Come on. We nearly went. It is. I found one. This one, Ronya, the robber's daughter. Ronya, daughter of a robin chief, robber chieftain, roams freely in the forest around a robber's fortress. But when she befriends Burke, son of her father's greatest enemy, it causes uproar. Ronya and Burke are forbidden to see each other again, so they decide to do something drastic. Suddenly, they're fended for themselves in the woods, but how will they survive when winter comes? And will Ronya's father ever accept her friendship with Burke so they can go home? Hey, uh, so I think that's all of the books now from the forest. I just haven't heard any for ages. There's just one last place that I wanna explore with you. Is it down that way, cameraman? No, just bears down that way. I can hear one panting. <laughs> just come this way. I don't know. Okay. I think so. Just... Do you right? Can you see it? <laughs> I knew it. One more. This one is by Catherine Arden, and it's called The Bear and the Nightingale. In a village at the edge of the, edge of the wilderness of northern Russia, where the winds blow cold and the snow falls many months of the year, an elderly servant tells stories of sorcery, folklore, and the winter king to the children of the family, tales of old magic frowned upon by the church. But for the young wild Vazia, these are far more than just stories. She alone can see the house spirits that guard her home and sense the growing forces of dark magic in the woods. Right, I've got all of my haul now. So, only thing left for me to do is see you tonight. Bye. Go ahead.